In April 1898, a prairie fire swept in from the east, threatening the small collection of frame houses and shacks that Saskatoon consisted of at the time. In the fall, two more prairie fires would threaten the settlement. The October fire would destroy several stables and haystacks, making the winter of 1889-90 a hungry one for many cattle in the district. Prior to this, the only serious blaze in the colony was in 1887, when the Horn Brothers' house was raised. The threat of fire convinced the settlers of the need for adequate firefighting measures. In September 1903, the Town Council would pass By-Law No. 5 for the prevention of fire to deal with the fire menace. Successive councils would debate the need to purchase firefighting equipment for the growing settlement. A fireman's scrapbook housed in the local history room chronicles the history of fire and firefighting in Saskatoon. Newspaper clippings and photographs show the progress from early bucket brigades to modern fire engines. In Case of Fire documents and celebrates the early years of the Saskatoon Fire Department, the early fire halls, firefighting equipment, and the stalwart firefighters who battled Saskatoon's blazes. Candid photographs provide a glimpse into the daily life of a firefighter. Join the local history room in honoring the Saskatoon Fire Department. In January 1904, City Council secured a site for a fire hall at the northeast corner of 3rd Avenue and 21st Street. Plans were submitted in August and tenders for the construction of the fire hall were advertised, calling for a brick or cement block structure to serve as both a fire hall and council chamber. The fire tower and shed were built shortly after to store the equipment and hoses. Saskatoon's Volunteer Fire Brigade would operate from this location for four years. Members of the Fire, Water and Light Committee tested the steam pumper outside the Western Hotel located on 2nd Avenue and 21st Street on Wednesday, January 18, 1905. After 20 minutes of trying, it was found a tap had been improperly turned. Adjustment made, the engine succeeded in throwing a steam higher than the Western Hotel. Alan Bowerman, Thomas Copeland and James R. Wilson are some of the dignitaries in this picture. Architect Walter Lachance would design, and local contractor Gordon Marr would build Fire Hall No. 1, located on the corner of 23rd Street and 4th Avenue. The modern white brick structure officially opened in December 1908. It featured three large front doors which swung outward when the alarms were sounded. The stable was in the rear and had eight stalls. The fire chiefs and firemen's quarters were on the second floor. The construction of the new hall inaugurated a modern firefighting service for the city. Fire Chief Thomas Heath sits with an unidentified colleague in the Chief's office located in Fire Hall No. 2. Thomas Edward Heath started as Fire Chief in October 1909 when the department employed 13 men. Under his direction, new fire halls were erected, modern equipment purchased, and the staff increased to 38. During his tenure tenure, Heath changed the Saskatoon Fire Department from a small, inefficient organization into a fully modern force. John Spence joined the Saskatoon Fire Department on February 7, 1910. He was promoted to the rank of captain on April 26, 1915. This may be when he purchased his new Indian motorcycle, seen here outside Fire Hall No. 1 on 23rd Street. Spence retired from a 37-year firefighting career in 1947. He was appointed chief in 1944. Firefighters raced down the 100 block of 2nd Avenue South in this 1911 photograph. At the time, all apparatus was horse-drawn, and citizens thrilled to the sight of horses racing down the street pulling the fire wagons. Well cared for by the city veterinarian, Dr. Orm, the 11 horses in the department were Diamond, Jim, Mac, Sandy, Buster, Jack, Donald, Duke, Tom, Fred, 
and prints. The erection of so many new tall buildings during Saskatoon's boom period between 1909 and 1913 prompted City Council to approve the addition of an aerial fire truck to the equipment of the Saskatoon Fire Department. The Seagrave 85-foot quick-raising aerial truck was drawn by three horses and equipped with rubber tires. Twelve firemen are shown on the new apparatus on, parked on Avenue B outside Fire Hall No. 2. The Temperance Hotel can be seen in the distance. An unidentified fireman stands beside the fire alarm box on Avenue A and 20th Street. When the new fire alarm system was inaugurated on February 8, 1910, outdoor fire alarm boxes were located at 21 locations. In 1913, when this box was installed by the King Edward Hotel, it was Box 51. Headquarters for the system were on the second floor of Fire Hall No. 2, under the control of the fire chief with the help of an electrician. This candid shot of six firemen relaxing, each enjoying a piece of watermelon outside Fire Hall No. 2, was taken by Thomas Heath around 1913. In addition to being fire chief, Heath was also a keen amateur photographer. His candid photographs capture a different side of a fireman's life. They show firemen at ease playing cards, smoking a pipe, and trying to pass the idle hours. Heath's photographs can be at times touching, revealing, and even comical. The building of the University of Saskatchewan on the east side of the river and the need for fire protection service to Nutana prompted the construction of Fire Hall No. 3, located on 11th Street near Broadway. Opened in January 1912, the Tudor Hall contained living quarters for six firemen as well as a private room for the captain in charge. The Nutana Water Tower was located behind the hall. Dressed in their finest suits, the men of Fire Hall No. 2 said farewell to 1912 and welcomed the New Year with a dance in the recently opened hall. A snowstorm on Tuesday meant that the first day of 1913 was cold and snowy. A contingent from the Saskatoon Fire Department was included in Saskatoon's first automobile parade held August 1, 1913. Fire Chief Thomas Heath in his automobile was one of the 350 cars in the parade, followed by two hose wagons. This one was brilliantly decked out with flags, streamers, and other decorative material. The men of Fire Hall No. 1 posed beside the motor hose wagon inside the station. The establishment of the Saskatoon Fire Department as a fully paid department on March 1, 1909 meant the department was no longer volunteer. On duty practically 24 hours a day, firemen would lobby for better hours and wages. On May 29, 1918, they would form Local 80 of the International Association of Firefighters. A crowd of spectators gathers outside the National Trust Building at 273 2nd Avenue South and 20th Street to watch a fire on the second floor of the building. At the time, during the mid-1910s, the second floor housed the offices of the Royal Northwest Mounted Police and the McLean, Hollenreich and Moxon Law Firm. An unidentified fireman stands beside the hose wagon in his firefighting uniform, circa 1920. The fire helmet and coat were designed for durability and to withstand water, providing the firefighter with some degree of protection. In a game played at the exhibition stadium, 
The firemen captured the 1931-32 Municipal Hockey League Championships for the second year in a row by defeating the Street Railway team 2-1. to one. The winning team has been identified as Back Row Left to Right William Cameron Jim Feather Earl Milhouse Cliff Bowerman Bert Davidson Albert Casey Jones and F Jack Fraser Front Row Left to Right Jack Parsons George Robbins, Charles Stark, Ed Wyman, and Ray Feather. Harvest on the prairies during the Second World War was difficult with many young men fighting overseas. These Saskatoon firemen helped with the 1944 harvest. They have been identified as, left to right, George Robbins, Captain Malcolm Wallace, Jim Bruce, Earl Milhouse, Bud Elliott, Frederick Sherd, and Thomas McDermott. The Saskatoon firemen would defeat the teachers two games straight to capture the 1947 Civic Softball League Championship and the trophy donated by Bernie's Hardware. They will qualify for the Northern Saskatchewan Senior B Finals but were defeated by the North Battleford Cardinals. The team members have been identified as Back Row Left to Right, Jack Fraser, Gordon Basnell, Leonard Prey, John Mitchell, Edgar Bocking, Bill Davey, Eric Falk, and Edward Wayman. Front Row, Warren Cantillon, Peter Sims, Albert Matchett, Max Presley, and William Vandell. That boy, Bob Upton. Victoria rooms at 309 Avenue B South had been condemned as a fire hazard in 1949 and all tenants had moved out. Fire broke out in the old building on February 24, 1950. By the time firemen arrived, the building was a raging inferno. The nearest fire hydrant was located at the corner of Avenue B and 20th Street. To protect the fire hoses, bus service in the street was temporarily interrupted until city workmen could lay planks and cinders. A three-alarm fire, August 3, 1951, would leave the premises of the Winnipeg Paint and Glass Company and Canada Egg Products gutted. The fire was believed to have started in the coal dust of an empty box car and quickly spread to the adjacent buildings. Poor water pressure and milling crowds of curious spectators hampered the firemen's efforts. Firemen on the roof of the B. Grummet & Sons Transfer Company warehouse at 622 Main Street. The fire on May 20th, 1952, would gut the interior of the Western Paper Shredders Company, which was located in the rear half of the building. The fire broke out in the paper shredding machine and caused an estimated $8,000 in damages. The opening of the new fire alarm building, located north of No. 2 Fire Hall on Avenue B in September 1953, brought all box alarms, telephone alarms, and communications through the switchboard and alarm circuits of the new building. From this control center, immediate contact could be made into any of the fire halls or radio-equipped apparatus, giving faster service in response to emergency calls. Despite the efforts of Saskatoon firefighters, a life was lost in this tragic 1955 fire which gutted a home on Alexandra Avenue in the North Park area. Deputy Fire Chief Jack Fraser, Captain Ron Skeets, John Knight, Fred Gadsby, and James Bell are seen at the window of the burning frame house. Mayfair United Church at 33rd Street and Avenue E 
was completely destroyed by a fire first detected at 11.30 on the morning of May 26, 1958. A mere half-hour earlier, the twenty-eight children in the kindergarten class had left, as had the caretaker who had gone home for lunch. Although six pieces of the firefighting equipment rushed to the scene, the fire soon raged completely out of control. In their spare time, members of Saskatoon Firefighters Local 80 worked to repair toys for needy children. Firemen Gordon Lang and Warner Bauer are shown with some of the donated toys which had been reconditioned in the workshop located in the basement of No. 2 Fire Hall. For the Christmas of 1958, firefighters repaired more than 2,000 toys. By 1958, all fire department apparatus was radio equipped. The expansion of the city and the opening of the new fire hall at Taylor Street and York Avenue meant new technology was needed to fight Saskatoon fires. We hope you enjoyed our virtual recreation of In Case of Fire. The original gallery show was held from January 11th to March 1st, 2012, and curated by Ron Jeremko, with the assistance of local history staff. We invite you to visit the local history the next time you are at the Francis Morrison Central Library.